Hello everybody, you're watching Variety Television and welcome back to another Pikmin Theory. So for today's video I wanted to kind of take a departure from what we typically do with the more serious theorizing and try to do a theory that's a bit more fun and a lot more speculative. And before we get started, let me know how you guys like this setup for the videos. I've been trying to think of a way to shake things up and make things a little bit more different and interesting, and this was the first thing that came to mind. So, if you all enjoy it or have any other suggestions, be sure to comment them down below. As for the theory, well, I've decided to call it the Bullboard Theory. The entire thing started when I was trying to write a theory about the evolution of life on PNF 404, with the main question that I wanted to answer being why has everything evolved to be so small? To start with, I made three simple and broad categories, insects, fish, and mammals, and then I attempted to tackle each of these as their own individual problem. I decided that the insect category was probably the easiest to start with, seeing as how bugs are typically pretty small as is, and many of them wouldn't have to have underwent much evolution in order to get to the size they are now. And honestly, the fish category only took a little bit more explaining. An interesting thing about a lot of aquatic creatures is that they can only grow to the size that their habitat will allow. And since we know the land formations of PNF 404 shift constantly and rapidly, that could provide the explanation that we need. If the land masses are changing and shifting constantly, then obviously that leaves the water behind to get changed and shifted as well. Large ocean creatures and small pond creatures probably get swapped around all the time, something from the ocean could easily get segregated from the ocean and put into a pond while these tiny creatures from the pond could get opened up and let into the ocean because of the shifting land masses. And if your habitat is constantly changing size and there's a good likelihood you could end up in a small body of water, chances are it would be better for your survival if you were a small creature as well. It wasn't until I started to try and explain the mammals that this theory actually started to formulate. For the mammals, we're going to start with the sirehound, and the sirehound is a good starting point because it is the oldest living mammal that we know of. Its age allows us a very interesting look into the state of evolution about 4,000 years prior to the events of Pikmin 4. This is notable because that is the exact moment that I theorized humans left the planet. The humans of PNF 404 are going to have a massive influence on the rest of this theory, so let's go ahead and establish that connection. Like I said, the sirehound is approximately 4,000 years old and is the last known creature to be in contact with humans. We know it was in contact with humans simply because it has a collar, and we also know that its owner was likely Arl Shepard or one of her crewmates. And we know this because the game lets us know that Ochi is an evolutionary relative of the Sirehound, meaning that whatever breed of dog the Sirehound is, Arl Shepard and her crew brought several with them to Gaia, and those evolved to be the rescue pups that we know today. And if you would like any more information about the Sirehound's origins, I encourage you to check out my other video, The Sirehound Theory. We can tell based on its appearance that the Sirehound exists at a point where organisms are already evolving to become smaller. Another point of interest about the Sirehound's appearance is at this point in time, 4,000 years ago, dogs, or at least the breed that the Sirehound is, have already evolved to become bipedal and have only two legs. So to reiterate, about 4,000 years ago, the humans left the planet, which we know because of Shepard's family history. At that point in time, the Sirehound was still there. We know because he has a collar, he had to have been in contact with humans. But he also is much smaller than a typical dog and bipedal, which means a large amount of evolution on the planet has already taken place. So if the Shepherds left the planet and brought dogs with them to Gaia, then maybe, just maybe, whoever settled Hockitate did the same thing. That's right, I'm bringing up Olimar's dog, Bulby. When Olimar crashes and discovers Bulborbs for the first time, he names them Bulborbs and classifies them as grub dogs after his own dog back home. And this isn't just because Olimar's feeling sentimental either, it's because they share a massive amount of similarities. Not only are they both relatively small and have spots, they are also bipedal and have stalked eyes. The evolution of spots and bipedalism is something that we actually see in all three modern examples of dogs, being Moss, Ochi, and Bulby. So I posit that the red bulborb and its offshoots must be distant relatives of these dogs. Clearly they've gone down their own unique road, but such is the way of evolution. 
However, despite their differences, they do still have traits like spots and bipedalism that link them back to the rescue pups. And a creature that I think could be related to the bulborbs and in turn, the rescue pups, are the bread bugs. Despite not being bulborbs at all, dwarf bulborbs look and act exactly like full-grown bulborbs, and they even more closely resemble Olimar's dog Bulby. And while we do know the bread bugs are just exhibiting evolutionary mimicry, the giant bread bug does display one example of behavior that could link them back to the others. It's a behavior that, to the best of my knowledge, we actually only ever see Moss, Ochi, and the Sire Hound do, and that's charging. And not charging like just running, but how Ochi and Moss can charge up and then smash into stuff. The giant bread bugs do this as well. Now, let's get into why I think they've all evolved to be so much smaller than they probably originally were. But please keep in mind as we go through this, I did say this was mostly speculative and for fun. As we went over the Sire Hound, I pointed out that it was a lot smaller than an average dog and some level of evolution had to have already taken place. And so while doing research for this video, I found that there are two key reasons that cause organisms to evolve to become smaller outside of the water. One of those reasons is very similar. If a creature's habitat is smaller or decreases in size, then those creatures could evolve to become smaller over time to fit their new habitat. The other reason is due to lack of resources, since smaller organisms can survive off of fewer resources. This makes me assume that the humans of the planet were either overpopulating and taking up all the space or something happened to the resources of the planet that rendered them unavailable for a while. And based on the context clues from the game, I think it might be both. Starting with the resources, I think that can very simply be explained by the massive amount of radiation that's present on the planet. While we do clearly see creatures and plants living amongst the radiation today, I'd be willing to bet that that probably wasn't always the case. Not only that, but I'd be willing to bet that this radiation is also what caused the rapid evolution of the creatures we see and probably is the source of the weird ones we see like the Snagrits. And we know from Pikmin 3 that the entire planet of Kopai is both overpopulated and overconsumed consuming, ultimately leading to a hunger crisis. However, we know from context clues from that game that this isn't the only time Kopai has underwent a crisis like this. As a matter of fact, Kopites are quite famous for using up all the resources on the planet and then just moving to the next one. If this behavior is so ingrained into who they are, maybe it tracks all the way back to their time as humans and helps us explain part of what happened. So some sort of nuclear disaster happened, which I still think is a war due to Shepard's family history. Either way, something happened that caused most of the resources to become unavailable for a while. And obviously this wouldn't just affect the humans, the effects of this would have rippled across the world and affected all living things. And the thing about radiation is that it kinda likes to hang out for a while and this problem did not immediately go away. In fact, it persisted for years. And while the humans and animals would eventually evolve to be able to withstand the radiation, they were still under-resourced and overpopulated. This change is what I think kick-started the evolution to mammals becoming smaller and is also what I think likely led to the humans leaving the planet. The state that the world was in about 4,000 years ago was nearly uninhabitable, so the humans had to pack up their stuff, grab their beloved pets, and set for the stars in search for a new home. Some of those groups, like the Shepherd, found peace on Gaia and dedicated their lives to rescuing others and trying to help people in need. While other groups, like the Copites, seem to have not learned from their mistakes and continue to ruin planet after planet. But luckily for the plants and animals that were left behind, they were able to eventually adapt to their new environment. Over time, these life forms became accustomed to the radiation. But not only that, they began to flourish in it. And with the humans gone, a lot of the resources started to come back. Many of the ecosystems restored themselves as best as they could while new ones were established. And by the time of Pikmin 4, it seems that many of these ecosystems have been restored to the point where certain creatures like bulborbs and blowhogs are able to start evolving back up to a larger size. And those of you paying close attention probably noticed that I left out a few pretty major creatures from this video so far. Specifically, the titaned weevil, the man at leg, the long legs creatures, the onions, and the Pikmin. The reason for this is because I think all of those creatures that I just listed were made by humans and are not natural. Starting with the spiders, each one seems very mechanical and they all seem like they were designed in order to protect something. The standard ones act sort of like party balls, popping open upon defeat, dropping whatever they were carrying around. Perhaps these were designed by people to help protect their valuables. 
The man at legs, however, is literally just a spider with a gun, which hardly seems natural to me. And unless I'm forgetting something, I think they only appear in interior locations, like caves and inside houses. So I think these enemies were intentionally designed with some sort of defense or offense in mind. And in the world I just proposed where food and other resources are dwindling, maybe these things were more necessary than we'd like to admit. And I think the tightened weevil is probably just the ultimate form of the man at legs. While it does appear more biological in nature, it not only has a gun, but a lot more weapons than that. Each one seem intentionally designed to target a specific Pikmin type, and the creature knows how to use each and every one of them. What's really interesting about all three of these examples to me is that they seem intentionally designed for defense against Pikmin. And as for the onions and Pikmin, I do have to admit they seem pretty engineered to me. While I do think the Pikmin are fully biological, the onions themselves greatly resemble machines. The onions from Pikmin 1 and 2 look very designed with that iconic stripe down the middle, while the onion from Pikmin 3 just literally looks like a machine. And no matter what game you look at, Pikmin 1, 2, 3, or 4, all onions are capable of producing biofuel, which they use to fly, and they use those flowers on top to help stabilize. When you look at all the details about the onion, they seem more like bio machines to me than something that could be naturally occurring. I also initially thought with Pikmin 4 they were trying to diverge away from this idea by making the onions look very organic. However, Pikmin 4 is also the game that reiterates more than any others that the onions resemble machines. Especially when we consider Petunia, a new character added in Pikmin 4 who is absolutely obsessed with onions. She constantly hangs out with our onion and is also full of dialogue about how the onions seem like biocrafters. So if the onions are these biocrafters or biological machines, why would the humans make them? And more specifically, why would they make them to produce Pikmin? Alright, so things are about to get really speculative and crazy, but hang with me for a minute. Considering what we've already theorized so far, maybe the onions and Pikmin were designed as a means to retrieve food and other resources for the humans. The world was likely too dangerous for many people to go out with food and other resources being in very short supply. And if it was too dangerous to simply go out and get food, it would make sense that people would design something to do that for them. And when we take a look at the Pikmin's behavior, this makes even more sense, as it is instinctive for them to bring nutrients back to their onion to propagate more Pikmin, while they bring other resources like toys, cell phones, batteries, and even food back to their leaders. This brings to mind a really interesting visual of the state of the world right before the humans left. It seems certain humans could have been developing and utilizing Pikmin to help them retrieve resources and food that they need for survival, while other humans seem to have been employing the help of the man at legs to protect what they did have. Of course, like I said at the start, this was meant to be fun and speculative, and all the evidence I have for this is just context clues from the game. My main goal is to start a conversation because I'm really interested in seeing what you all think the origins of these creatures are and to see why you think the world is the way it is today. Anyways, that's what I'm calling the Bulborg Theory. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, consider leaving a like. Don't forget to comment down below and let me know your ideas for what you think could have caused all of this to go down, or do you think I'm on the right track? Again, don't forget, this was all just a theory. Thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned. Variety Television will be right back.